smile and say amen. I'm sure if you get over there, you will definitely be happy because we are told that over there, there is no crying, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, no more dying. That's where everyone who knows and trusts and obeys God should be looking forward to that place, that land so bright and fair. Uh, we're thankful to God for this blessed opportunity to be able to assemble ourselves together on this Lord's Day, which we know is also on the calendar as Mother's Day. Uh, our prayer is that uh, we're here for the right reason. Amen. The right reason is because it's the Lord's Day. Uh, the second reason is because it's Mother's Day. Uh, in this uh, uh, time in which we live, uh, we can see the challenges that that not only Christians have, but definitely Christian mothers have in trying to keep themselves as well as their children uh, in the walk of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, if you're here with us this morning and you're visiting, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. We're thankful that God has sent you our way. We don't look at your being here as an accident or by chance. Uh, we believe that everything God does, he has a purpose, he has a reason. Uh, we are the ones that sometimes think that we are lucky, and oftentimes we use the terms that we are lucky rather than using the terms that we are blessed. Children of God don't have to depend on luck. Uh, you have to do is just stay with your father, obey him, and the things that he bless you with, uh, they won't be something that came just by chance. Now, on, on this morning, we had read in your hearing from the book of Proverbs 31. Uh, we had verse 25 through 31 read for you. <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, uh, breaking my lesson down in about five different sections on this morning because I know I have some, some young folk who are, and I really appreciate that, who are uh, taking notes. Don't know why old folk won't do it no more. They need it the most because their memories are bad. But when we have children who is willing to take notes, that tells me that there's an interest there and hopefully this will be something that they, they can carry with them long after this day is gone. We'll be talking about, first of all, the woman. Then we'll talk about mothers from the, spirit, from the scriptural perspective. Then I'll speak briefly to the children, briefly to the mothers, and then to everyone that is here. So this message can help everyone who needs help. If you uh, like Jesus said, some of those Pharisees, if you don't need help, then this message is not for you. That's why he said, I came to seek and save those that were lost. He said that the healthy don't need a doctor. And uh, if we allow ourselves to think that we all that, we don't need anything from God, then we are the one that is in serious trouble. Without God, we can do nothing, as the Bible tells us. And so um, let's go back to the Proverbs. Uh, let's just reread that, and then we'll get into the thought for this morning. Proverbs 31, <clears throat> beginning by verse number 25, it starts out by saying, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. I'm reading from the King James. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household, and eateth not bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtu virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gate. I hope you will see this passage in the lesson this morning uh, as we just try to share. Uh, I don't think I'll be telling you anything that you don't know, uh, but I do want to make sure I remind us well of what thus says the Lord as we are attempting to Worship him this morning in spirit and in truth, giving God the praise, and then also recognizing that we need to praise our mothers, according to scripture. In the beginning, God established the purpose for woman. 
we had a few of our ladies uh, and a few of the brethren who um, participate in our Tuesday morning uh, class, Cradle to the Grave class. And, and in that class, we uh, last month, or been about two months maybe now, uh, we devoted a month to talking about the woman, the power, the purpose, uh, the praise, all of those things that pertain to the woman. And it's amazing how uh, and why even someone who's been created in a certain way by God wants to be something other than. Uh, uh, the one thing that we need to recognize is this. You can't mess up God's plan. You can only mess up yourself. Those women who wants to be men, I have to ask the question, why? Amen. I mean, uh, me as a man, I don't want to be pregnant. Amen. God didn't give me that. The woman has a special place in God's service. And when women choose to do other than what God created them for, then the question has to become, why? What would drive something like that? And you have uh, women who want to be men and men who want to be women. Amen. Uh, so if, if you are a man, uh, I wonder what are they, I wonder what are those folk doing today? You know, are they saying, uh, I don't know, I can't see them saying Happy Mother's Day. You, you do know you have two men trying to raise children, right, as a family? So what do they say on a day like today? <laughs> when Father's Day rolled around, what do the two women say on a day like today? These things happen along with all of the other foolishness in the world because people don't Amen. I started to say they don't know God. Uh, and uh, maybe some will argue that they do, and I would give them that. Maybe they do know God, but I don't believe that they believe God. And even if they say they believe God, then that leads me to the point to where they could care less about their souls. Because you can't say you believe God and do some of the things that people do expecting to be saved. God cannot lie. God does not make mistakes. And what God created, again, he did it for a purpose, and he gave everything that he created a purpose in this world. And so, in the beginning, God created the woman, and it was not for his purpose, uh, for him directly, but it was to complete and sustain that vital part of his creation, mankind. Apes can't have men. Oh, I said men, I didn't say babies. Ape have baby apes, right? Amen. But apes cannot bring human beings into the world. Amen. Amen. You even got folk who are trying to do this uh, cloning thing. Uh, I mean, it, for, in other words, it just seems to me that we're in a time where it is obvious that what God has done is not enough for some folk. And because it's not enough for some folk, he's not going to do any more. If what he's done for you is not enough for you to trust, give yourself to, and obey, then you made your choice. Amen. You decide, whether you know it or not, that God is not your God is not your uh, God. God is not your father. Satan is. Satan is the one that causes folk to do everything that opposes God. And you and I, when we fall into sin, we are doing those things that opposes God. But a child of God has that relationship with God to where they can get themselves right. They need to understand something. If you don't get yourself right with God and you leave this life not right with God, where do you think you're going to end up? Now again, it's Mother's Day. But we're talking about the woman right now. Uh, I want you to understand that in God's, in his creation, watch this. Uh, we know the Bible tells us that man was created from a lump of dust. Dust of the earth. Amen. Amen. But do you not know, uh, the Bible don't say that the woman was created from the dust of the earth. Now, here's what you women need to get. <laughs> Uh, 
The Bible says God put the man to sleep and he took from him a rib and from that rib he made woman. So watch this. Man was created from the dust. The woman was created from a like creature. The woman was created from man by God. So the woman that the man I had in my lesson here is somewhat refined. But the woman is doubly refined. Some of y'all might know uh, back in the day when you used to have sisters. You know, when you got your flour and you got them big lumps in it. And, and you have to sift it. Hello? I know y'all don't cook no more, but those of you that do, you, you remember that? Amen. You have to sift the flour, and, and, and the more you sift it, the finer it becomes. Yeah. Well, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that lump of clay that woman was made for was sifted, if you will, to where God didn't have to use dirt to make the woman. He took from that part of the already created creature, man, and made a woman. So the woman has value, the woman has status that God has given her, but because we don't stay with our focus and steady on God, we fall for the foolishness of the world, and women have brought themselves down much lower than what God ever intended. Amen. So, with the woman being, having a special place in the heart of God. Not only was she created from a like creature, but she was also, as the Bible says, created in the image and the likeness of God. A woman was the last being that God created. Amen. And when he did, he said, everything was very good. Genesis chapter 131. He made the woman, who was named Eve, to help the man, Adam and to bring children into the world. So again, when I hear women who say things like, I don't want no children, <laughs> okay, you don't want to fulfill your purpose that God created you for. Hello, yeah, I know folks don't like that. It, women's live and all that stuff that mess our minds up so bad to where, uh, so if you don't want to do that, then what is your purpose then for God? How, how, <laughs> how do you fulfill your purpose in Christ. Now, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying now that, you know, you're wrong in sin because you don't have children, or even if in your mind you say you don't want to. I'm sure you got your reasons. What I'm trying to get you to understand is from the biblical purpose, from the biblical standpoint, what was the purpose of the woman? Two things the Bible says. To help the man, hello, and bring forth children. And they fail to realize that you can do something that no man can do. <laughs> and Satan twists our hearts and our minds to the point to where we have the boldness to say, we don't want to do what God put me here for. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. It's coming, it's coming. Uh, if you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, uh, verse 20, and Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, you will see, again, that purpose that woman was created for. The woman who becomes a mother supplies God with a heritage of children. Psalms 127, verse 3. The Christian woman who becomes a mother supplies God with the godly seed. I, I, I tell you that for a reason. You know, you, you have women who are not godly women. Yes, those children are still belong to God. Uh, and oh, by the way, uh, just because uh, their mothers are not godly mothers don't mean they can't be godly children. But understand, your Bible tells you that the children belong to God. <laughs> we raise them like they belong to us. Which means we allow them or sometimes cause them or direct them to be everything that God is against. Because God is not your focus. <laughs> Godly women, when they become uh, uh, Christian, rather, uh, Christian women, when they become mothers, again, they supply God with the godly seed he wants. You can read about that in Malachi chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. 
the woman is not just bringing forth a child, but an immortal soul that will never cease to exist, but live on forever in eternity, with in eternal life or eternal condemnation. That's what you're bringing forth when you have children. So don't you think that when you bring a child into the world, you ought to try to connect that child with God as soon as you can? Yeah. That's if you understand the rest of the story, the fact that after this life, they will continue to live on and so will you. But where? <laughs> so it becomes our choice. Right now, today, this morning, you choose whether you're going to be in heaven or hell. And those who don't believe in hell, oh well. Uh, uh, I just told you, God could not lie, and I don't think he'd talk about hell in the book if it wasn't true. Yes. Yeah. It is usually the woman who initiates the godlike virtues in her children, oftentimes in their husbands, and the one who introduces or influences them to attend church. I know a lot of preachers who have said to me that it was their wives that brought them to Christ. Oh, not that they weren't in some denomination, not that they weren't worshiping God, but it was through their wife that they learned the truth about God. And it was their wives who caused them to become members of the lost church and went on to become preachers. A lot of preachers today even fall into that same boat. So we know anybody with half a sense understand that when a child is born, who's at, who's at home with the child the most? Who's around the child the most? Now again, here we go. Uh, we in a society in our generation to where you have stay at home dads <laughs> and work in the economy mothers. Now, that wasn't what God intended. And again, I'm not saying that is a sin. What I'm trying to get you to understand is, if that's not the way God set it up, how do you and why do you expect such great success when you're doing things man's way? You're doing things your way. You, you don't trust God enough to fix whatever problems you have? See, see, see we, we're so educated and so modernized where a lot of Christians still look at the Bible as being something old and antique. Not realizing that this Bible, it got more life in it than you do. <laughs> this is the living word of God to living beings who can make a decision where you want to spend eternity. Because there is eternity after this. <laughs> and to get the choices we make. So when you dive into your Bible study and just study about women, period, you ought to be able to come away with something that ought to make you as a woman, as well as you as a man, thankful for women. <laughs> just as you can never repay Jesus for what he has done. Realize that you can never fully repay your mother either. The best we can do is to love her, respect her, obey her, honor her every day of our lives. And when you learn God, when you learn Christ, you learn this as well. He wants us to live our lives for him and for what he has done for us. That's what Christ wants. You, you, all your mother wants from you, most, most mothers, is that they, they, want, they want the best for you. They want to be proud to be able to say, that's my child. Amen. And the child ought to be able to be proud to say, that's my mother. Amen. But we know that ain't happening, don't we? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And there's a reason it's not happening. Because we have left the path that God put man and woman on for foolishness. All of which is only going to cause people to be lost. Mothers give a glimpse into the heart of God. 
marvelous. Think about this now. Isaiah 66, verse 13. I'm going to have I'm gonna have the elder read a couple of these for us. I can't do too much reading because it takes too much of my time. But Isaiah 66, verse 13. Uh, now the statement was, mothers gives us a glimpse into the heart of God. Look at what the Bible says about mothers. Read. As one whom is his mother comforted. A woman who what? Whom his mother comforted. Okay, one whom his mother comforted. So will I. So will I. The Comfort Lord. you. Read. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now, God is saying, he's letting them know, just like a mother comforts her child, God says, I comfort my children. But where do God's children usually go for comfort? To some other meatball. <laughs> and not to God. And the kind of comfort man gives you is not nearly the comfort that God wants you to have. Because no one can comfort you like God can. Man can only tell you how they feel or how they think you ought to feel. God tells you the truth. He'll tell you, hey, when you're in trouble, don't worry about it. If you obey me, what looks like a problem to you. Uh, you remember in the Old Testament, I forget exactly what the scripture is where it says, is anything too hard for God? Do you approach your father every day with that kind of attitude? That there's nothing that I can't do? If I'm obeying God, there's nothing that I can't do? Especially if it's something that God wants me to do, regardless of how impossible it looks to me. Because my Bible tells me with God, all things are possible. But in Jesus helps us to understand something else. He said, without me, <laughs> you can do nothing. So look at how many people are doing stuff without Jesus and they think it's something. I don't, I, don't, I don't expect y'all to be shouting anything, but I didn't expect it to be this quiet either. I mean, uh, hmm. I think that's some good info that you ought to know <laughs> and put into your life daily. Mothers love their children. Amen. <laughs> so does God. You know, we're told in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Please understand this. The world there is not talking about uh, the dirt and the oil and the gold. It's talking about the people that he <laughs> created. He gave his son for the people that he created because the world itself is going to burn up. The people that he created gets to choose whether they're going to burn or whether they want to be with God. When we understand what we're doing, what this is all about, it ought to help us make better decisions in life. Some of us still got too much TV and all this other crap in our lives, and we can't see, as they say, the forest for the trees. Mothers want only the best for their children. God gave and still gives his best to his children. God's advice, God's counsel, God's instructions is the best you can get. <laughs> I don't care what it's about. If it comes from God, that's the best. Even when it looks like I, I need to do all this if I really want to be wealthy. Well, okay, God says you're already wealthy. Why? Because he owns the whole world and you and his child, you own the whole world too. But in your mind, since you can't spend like you want to, since you can't do and go like you want to, you think God is holding you back. No, no. God knows that for some of us, if you got $10, he already know you're going to blow that. So why would he give you another 10? You just blow 20. But your Bible and mine talks to us about money. Timothy talked about it a lot. And what it lets us know is, first of all, learn to be content with what God has given you. And then he can bless you with more. But my Bible also tells me, he that constantly is seeking money, that's greed, and it says that all that's going to do is lead him to eternal condemnation. But what do we do? Just that very thing. God's counsel, just like a mother's counsel, is the best counsel that we can get. Mothers are very protective of their children. Amen? So is God. Let's look at Psalms chapter 97, verse 10. 
Psalms 97 verse 10. Uh, you know that, you know, that <laughs> uh, somebody mess with a woman's child, really she loses her mind sometimes. <laughs> and when I say loses her mind, in other words, all reason kind of go out the window for a moment because you, you mess with it. Even in the animal world, you ever notice when somebody's messing with a, a bear's cubs? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're messing with. Amen. I've even seen ducks attack people. Amen. All they were trying to do was help the little duckling get across the road, and mama duck comes along, and she's doing some hard pecking. Why? Because she don't know your intentions when it comes to her child. Amen. That's the way mothers are, most of them, with their children. But I want you to know this morning, that's the way God is with his children. The Bible says what? Psalm 97, 10. You that love the Lord. If you love the Lord. And hate evil. And hate, ooh, pause there for a moment. Love the Lord, but don't love evil. Right? Yes, sir. Read. He preserveth the souls of his saints. You preserve, uh, he, the Lord preserves your soul, his saints. Uh, aren't we his saints? Well, okay, those few, y'all are good, so y'all know what he's talking about. He preserves your soul, read. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. And he delivers us out of the hand of the wicked. Now, what's the hands of the wicked? Everything that ain't godly. <laughs> on your job, some of y'all is on your job by the skin of your teeth. God is kind of keeping you there because if it was left up to them, you'd have been gone a long time ago. How often do you take credit for what you do in life? All the time. But do you not know that without God, <laughs> again, you would be nothing now. You might say, well, brother, I know thieves and thugs and, and dope dealers and all that that have um, more money, nicer houses. All. You know what they do. But if you read your Bible, your Bible will tell you they have their reward. Is that what you want? To enjoy the life here, maybe for 10, 15 years? Because that's what drugs will do to you. It'll take you out <laughs> in, in due time. And end up in hell for the rest of your life, for the rest of eternity. Is that what you want? No. God it helps you to understand. <clears throat> when Jesus says, what does a man profit if he gained the whole world? Now, church, think about that. Gain the whole world and lose your soul. So the question is, how important is your soul to you? It's very important to God. God would rather have your soul than that world that he created that he's going to destroy. But our bad decision causes us to cause him to destroy us too. Our decision is what causes him to destroy. He didn't create us to destroy us. But he did tell us, if you don't obey me, if you give yourself over to my enemy, Satan, the one who I know and he knows there is no salvation for him. He knows he can't contend with me one on one. So he's coming after you. Just, uh, just like the bullies do with Mama child. If Mama is ever around, when that bully is bullying her child, he won't be bullying for long. Either that or it'll be a war. <laughs> it'll be mama and the bully and all the bully backups. Because mama's going to defend, defend her child. We have to understand that God defends, God protects, God takes care of us. But when we take it upon ourselves that we got this, <laughs> what God tends to do is you just step back and let you say, okay. Let's see how much you think you got. Then when we get all beat up, torn up, <laughs> ripped up, now we want to come back to God for help. We bring this mess up on ourselves. Mothers will do anything for their children. Amen. What God did tops everything. to our children this morning. Love and care for your mother. 
Respect and obey your mother. Learn of God that you might please him in the treatment of your mother. With God, you will learn it's not about things and stuff, but about love and self-sacrifice. You put your mother before yourself just like she puts you before herself. And your life will be the better for it. <laughs> If your mother has toiled and sacrificed for you and have led you to the feet of the Savior, her prayers have been answered. A godly mother, prayers have been A godly mother wants her children in Christ. A woman that's not godly, she can care less what the children are doing. That's why a lot of them leave them at home. And they come sit up and worship, think, think you're serving God. You're serving Satan. You're in the presence of God's people, but you got children that's at home, still under your care, still under your influence, and you don't have enough influence to influence them to church, <laughs> to influence them to Bible class. Did you hear they have a soul too? They grow up to be like you one day? So mothers have a charge. Mothers have a challenge. Godly mothers is willing to make the sacrifices, willing to do whatever she can, not only to make sure that their children have what other children have, but to make sure that her children knows God. Because when that child is not in her presence, who can she depend on? Can't depend on other people. She has to depend on God, and that's why a lot of mothers stay up late at night when the child is out. They don't know where they are, what they're doing sort of thing. All mama can do is stay there and pray that the Lord watch out for them. And a lot of children don't have enough sense to thank mama just for something like that. And, and here's why. Here's why. Because a lot of them don't know God like that. Uh, they, they don't know that that's one of the things that a uh, mother has in a relationship to God. That God knows that, that the, uh, she can't watch her children all the time. But, but she knows that she serves an all-seeing God. Amen. That if you, like that said, if you love God, he will deliver you, he will preserve you, he will take care of you and yours. But for those of you who kick God to the curb, Whenever you feel like just going having your good time and hoping you can get back, that's a chance I encourage you this morning to stop trying to take. When people leave this world, there's no second chances. The condition you leave here in is the condition you'll be resurrected in. I was going to tell you a story about three sons, but I don't have time. Yeah. So for the children, Again, since your mom has done all that for you and she's praying uh, that you, now it's time for you to take the responsibility from here on and to listen to your mother and to be the best child you can be in the Lord. That's what we're asking of the children of the church. Stay with the Lord. Trust God. Obey your parents. That's, I mean, those scriptures are there for the children. Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Obey your parents that your days might be long on the earth. All of those things are things that God has promised if we obey. In every day of our lives, we see children being killed, murdered, uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> to the mothers here, God bless you. <laughs> know that you are not on your own. You haven't been. You probably thought you were. It is God who has brought you this far. And he will take you further if you will allow him. Learn of God that you may understand your purpose and your expectations from God. He's the one that designed you. And he understands you better than you understand yourself. You were made in his image and in his likeness. And when you understand him, you will have a better appreciation for yourself. Then you will know that if nobody on earth loves you, God does. Whenever a child of God feels like they are alone, 
feel like nobody cares, like nobody's concerned about them, all you have to do is wake up and stay woke. <laughs> Understand that God never sleeps. God don't leave us. You left him. And if you swallow your pride, <laughs> as bad as it is, and go back to where you left God from, he will be right there waiting for you. Because he never moves. <laughs> we move away from him all the time. Some folks don't get to find their way back. Which is why it's dangerous to be playing that game, thinking you can do wrong and then just ask God for forgiveness later. Later may not come for you. At some point, that's going to end. So why play those kinds of games? Why put yourself through some stuff that you don't have to go through and just stay with the Lord and watch how he, watch how he can bless and direct your lives. Now to everyone here, this is for everybody. And especially those who may be with us who are not members of the Lord's Church. Just as we only have one mother, I don't care who you call your mama, the one that birthed you into the world, that's your mother. Amen. You can be adopted by somebody and she can be the nicest person in the world, but that's not your mother. That's your adopted mother. In other words, let's call it what it is. You only get one mother. That's important for you to understand. Why? Because just like when it comes to the church, there's only one church. Yes, there's many of them out there. But in your Bible, you only can read about one. And whether you like the mother you got or not, still don't change. She's still your mother. And so whether you like the church of Christ or not, ain't going to change. It is still the church of Christ. Amen. You get to make the choice. Yes, there's a lot to choose from. Satan is good about doing that, giving you everything. And, and that's why he, <clears throat> he reversed. Look at how he reversed what God had done. God says, uh, we are back in the beginning. Now God said, all of those trees. You can freely eat. Remember now, all of those trees you can freely eat. But the tree that's in the midst of the garden, the tree that's of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat thereof, for the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So they had all them trees to choose from. And what did they do? <laughs> Go for the very one God told them to stay away from. I'm sure how true Satan is. Your Bible tells you there's only one church. What Satan did, he flipped it. He says, all them churches out there are good. There's Christians in all churches. All churches are right. All churches belong to God. That's the devil's lie. And what do people do? They ignore the one, which is what Adam and Eve should have done, and go for the many. They should have ignored the one God told them to stay away from and go for the many. Instead, they did the opposite. So, what are we doing, church? <laughs> How do we bring other folks to Christ in a way to where when they do come, if they come, it's not about you. Because if it was you, the soon, as soon as you mess up, they go home. Bring them to Christ by something that don't change. The word of God. Let them see Christ in you, but let them read for themselves what the Bible says. Because if truth brought them here, truth will keep them here. But if another person brings them here, y'all know how we are. We have our good days and our bad days. Right? My Bible tells me God have all good days. God is not moody like us. Thank God for that. If you are a moody person, <laughs> you know how things are up and down, you know, roller coaster, in other words, but God is consistent. And if we stay with him, do as he tells us to do. The blessing that he wants to uh, bless us with, you couldn't even number. But since scripture does say, our iniquities 
have separated us from God. And not only that, it has kept God from blessing us with some things that he wants to bless us with. Because we won't stay with him. We won't obey him. Just as God designed our mother, he also designed the church. Your mother bore you into this world. It is through the church you are born into God's family. Just as you must love your mother, the Bible says you must love the church. Your mother feeds you, nourishes you, develops you physically. The church feeds, nourishes, and develops you spiritually. You couldn't choose your mother, <laughs> but you can choose the church. Everyone, I say the church, we're not talking about the building, are we? Watch this. We're talking about these people. <laughs> so can you imagine? I mean, I got to choose to be among those people. I know some of them are just as crooked as I am. They may be. But if you keep reading your Bible, your Bible will tell you God is going to take care of them. You know what I mean? Don't let another person keep you from obeying the truth. And so many folk have done that. To where, just as the Bible teaches, to whom you yield yourself to, that's whose servant you are. So when you yield yourself to listen to other people as opposed to listening to God, wherever they go, that's where you're going to end up. Wherever God is, that's where you're going to end up if he's the one that influences your life. That's simple gospel preaching. But that's not enough for some folk. Just as no other mother can bear you into this world, no other church can bear you into God's family or provide salvation. Why not make God your and your mother happy this morning by learning, believing, and obeying the word of God starting today? Uh, I had some information that I was going to share with you, but it ain't, it, it's not needful. You can look it up in, the, in your own encyclopedia. Google it. <laughs> Google Mother's Day, and you'll find that somebody named Anna Jarvis, you know, she's the one that uh, had them put forth the joint resolution of Congress on May the 8th, 1914, and a presidential proclamation by Woodrow Wilson. Christ's been around a lot longer than Woodrow Wilson. And they just started Mother's Day in 19, 1914. Hello? And there have been mothers ever since Adam and Eve. So who are you going to listen to? My, my, my. The Lord's Day has been celebrated 190 years plus. <laughs> the proclamation established by Christ, <laughs> who was around a lot longer than America and everything that goes with America. So again, uh, this morning, uh, I, 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 tried to, I tried to keep it on a, a light note with the truth. And, and y'all showed me some of you that you don't really, you don't really want you know, too much truth. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, just know when you leave here, wherever you plan on taking mama, I hope you are not ashamed to when you get to this nice restaurant that you're going to take her to. Y'all ain't taking them? <laughs> all, all I was going to tell you to do is at least pray for your food. Don't be too ashamed to pray for your food. Uh, remember, this is your mother. You, uh, mothers, if you end up at the Golden Arches, let me tell you something. Go ahead and eat that Big Mac. Okay? The Big Mac is better than nothing. God will bless you later on. But that child is showing you, that this is how much you mean to me. <laughs> the way they're going to say Happy Mother's Day is give you a happy meal. <laughs> but I believe, especially when women of the Lord's church who are mothers start taking God's word serious, the whole church will be a lot better for it. And, 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 and that's, I'm only focusing on mothers today because it's Mother's Day. If I'm preaching to you on Father's Day, and even if I'm not, in June, we're going to talk about the men. Right? You know, again, God made them for a special purpose too, and they won't keep it. 
Just like I said, you got men want to be women. <laughs> I don't know why. But again, that's, that's Satan's stuff. We have to learn to stay with the Lord. And that's all I'm asking you this morning. Love God first, and you can learn to love your mother and others. But if you don't love God, there's no way you can love others the way God wants you to love them. And then when you can't love others the way God wants you to love them, you cannot love God because he's the one that says, he used the idea of a friend or a brother. He says, how can you say you love your brother whom you see every day? Uh, how, how can you say you love God whom you see every day and hate your brother? No. I get it right. How can you love God who you've never seen and hate your brother who you see every day. I know I get that right. Yeah. You can't do it, but we fool ourselves into thinking we can. And remember, did y'all hear that? Let me repeat it. We fool ourselves. That's what happens in most of our life. We fool ourselves into believing things that we know is not even true. But it makes us feel good. Make your mother feel good today. Give her genuine love. If you take out the dinner, don't say, well, I'll pay for the food, you leave the tip. <laughs> Remember, I told you in the beginning, you can never repay her for what she's done, so why you want her to split anything? You'd be better off just saying, here, here's a card, love you. <laughs> I'll be by next month. That's how some folks treat the Lord. Here's my couple of dollars for the offering. Yes, I'm going to take the Lord's Supper. I'll be back in two weeks. And somehow they feel that they are all right with God. No, you are all right with yourself. Amen. You are not right with God. Amen. We should already be focused on trying to make sure and making our calling and election sure as the Bible teaches. If you're here this morning and you're not a member of the Lord's Church, the Bible simply tells us there are at least five stages that we must consider if we want to be saved. First of all, you got to hear God's word. You just, you're just not going to be saved not knowing God or what God is about. You got to hear God's word. Upon hearing, you got to believe it. You should believe it. If you believe it, it's going to cause you to change your life. That's repentance. And then you got to be willing to make the confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. A lot of people are ashamed to do that. And Jesus has already said, if you deny me before me, and I'll deny you before my father, which is in heaven. Then you got to be baptized. Without baptism, there is no salvation. When you are baptized, the Bible says that's where the Lord, not the water there, the Lord is where cleanses you of all unrighteousness, cleanses you of all your past sin. God does that. You don't, we don't even forgive ourselves when we come up out of the water. We still come up with the foolishness and the stuff that we have to deal with in our everyday life. God is saying, I want you to forget about all that. I want you to start thinking a different way. But we can't do that. Now, over time, you probably will. But just understand, when you first come up, you're still somewhat the same person you were when you went down, except for what's going on up here. If you really believe that God forgives you in baptism, like, like, like the Bible teaches, and you come up, why would you start lying again? You, you just got baptized because you was lying. Because you was cussing and fussing and fighting and stealing. You gonna get baptized and then come up and still be fussing, fighting? All you did was get wet. Baptism not only cleanses you of all your past sin, but it puts you in the family of God. <laughs> Then he says, now that you're mine, I just ask you to be faithful, even unto death. Someone just tried to threaten your life because of me, God is saying, choose me. Because if you choose your life, uh, you will lose your life. And when he's saying lose your life, he's not just talking about to that person who's threatening you. He's talking about you will lose life eternity with me. So again, we have the choice, don't we? If you're here already uh, this morning, you're already a, a child of God. If you know you haven't been treating, I'll start with mother, you haven't been treating mother right, this is an opportunity for you to repent and start treating her right from here on. But there's a real good chance that if you haven't been treating mother right, you need to know this, you haven't been treating God right. So again, you need to 
get a fresh start. God gives you an opportunity to get it right, repent, and from here going forward, don't make those same mistakes. He says, be faithful to death, and I give you a crown of righteousness. So if you're here and you find yourself on either side, why not come forth right now as we stand and sing the Savior's invitation song. Come from the Lord's